This lecture is about the difference between structuralism and post-structuralism. I'm D. Elizabeth Glasgow, and I'm your lecturer for this series. First, structuralism. Structuralism acknowledges the existence of a fixed real world, one where you have ideas that rest upon a bedrock of material relations, whether they be human, social, or economic relations, or a combination of the three. Structuralists like Ferdinand de Saussure, Louis Althusser, or Roland Barthes, or others, believe that there exists a coherent system upon which meaning is constructed in a similar fashion for most individuals. These overarching systems place limits on all truth, thought, and meaning for a majority of the world's societies. For instance, what someone believed in Afghanistan would mean the same thing for someone in the United States. The structuralists believed in universal truths that explained just about everything. Structuralists like Althusser, for instance, came under particularly heavy criticism because he believed that powerful institutions like his ideological state apparatuses or ISAs like the family, schools, the media, the church, and repressive state apparatuses, or RSAs, like the police, military, and criminal justice system, had the power to structure the thought of all individuals in a society, regardless of class, age, gender, sexuality, or combination of these social factors. It mattered very little the particularities of the communities and cultures in which individuals existed. Now, the structuralists didn't like being labeled structuralists. Many contested this. But the fact remains that many of these theorists, in one way or another, put forth ideas that supported monolithic institutions that operate as a source of all meaning, purpose, and action in the world. Now, post-structuralism. Well, the post-structuralists doubt the existence of a concrete reality. People like Foucault and Stuart Hall, Laclau and Mouffe, and others emphasize that ideas and our ideas about the world, our reality, depend upon constructed discourse in a society, the way that we speak, communicate with each other, and respond to that communication. The post-structuralists were not relativists, but they did argue that universal truth, if it does exist, is unknowable. Because of the existence of multiple truths, there exists in discourse, they believed, a certain amount of ambiguity and tension that is not fixed. Meanings are forever shifting. They are not static. Necessarily, the post-structuralists focus on the polysemic nature of media artifacts, where you have a given artifact, whether it be a television show, a musical composition, a TV variety show, or a film, or art piece. All of these possess multiple meanings, depending on the intent of the creator or producer and the reception given the artifact by diverse audiences. The improvement that the post-structuralists brought to structuralism was that post-structuralism allows for the presence of difference among social and cultural phenomena to be observed, to be analyzed and understood. Post-structuralism also led to a discussion about hegemony, something we'll talk about later. It also led to the possibility of struggle against dominant meanings which can lead to challenging, ameliorating, or even destroying institutionalized ways of thinking and doing. Unlike the structuralists who look for overarching systems that bind people together, the post-structuralists looked at the malleability of human existence, how our differences account for new ways of looking at social and cultural formations, as well as the complex ways institutions function in society. Now, the ultimate goal of the post-structuralists was to return agency, something we'll look at again in later lectures. 
their goal was to return agency to the subject who operates within the structure, while at the same time acknowledging the way that institutional power structures of domination still wield great power over individual and community's thoughts and actions, meaning, production, ways of thinking, and doing.